What's going on guys, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're gonna to be diving into color grading. Let's get into it. This has to be one of the most requested videos I've had from you guys in a long time. Everyone has been messaging me, uh, putting it in the comments below. When are we getting color grading? I wanna do a color grading tutorial, color grading tutorial. Uh, so I figured today is a great day to dive into that subject. Now, disclaimer before we get started, I am not a professional colorist by any means. There are people that get paid a lot of money just to color grade and color correct things within in videos it is a very specific job I can color grade because I do a lot of editing and stuff and sometimes I just need to turn something around on the fly and I don't have time to pass it off to the actual color grader I work with this is not a tutorial on how to create LUTs this is not just to slap one thing across the board and you're good to go we're gonna kind of dive into more the color grading process of things I am going to show you how to create a really cool look that can be applied to multiple things but this is is not just a slap on and you're good to go for the rest of the video this is specifically tailored for a certain look you can follow along and figure out how to do it but with all that aside let's dive into this and uh, let's get going the first thing you're gonna need is a well exposed video clip it's gonna make your life way easier when you go the color grade you will get better when you start color grading images that are underexposed or overexposed but for the base stuff, I would definitely start with images that are very well exposed. This video clip is me outside with a mask on because the world we live in today, the footage I'm coloring was shot on the Canon EOS R and C-Log 8-bit. On this particular color grade, I went with an end of the world grungy kind of look, making the shadows a little bit cooler. It just felt appropriate to what this video clip was. The first thing we're gonna do is get on top of our video clip and we are gonna hop inside the color tab. Now over to the left, you have your gallery LUTs, media pool, timeline. We don't need LUTs or anything like that over there. So we're gonna uncheck LUTs and we are gonna just focus on doing things with nodes and building our color grade from there. The first thing we're gonna do is start creating some nodes. I'm gonna hit option S on a Mac twice to bring up a total of three nodes. Then I'm gonna right click on them and start naming them. The first one, Exposure. And then I'm gonna right click on the second one and also name it Saturation. Then we're gonna to move to the third one and we're gonna name it Look. Then I'm gonna right click on the Looks node and I'm gonna go down to Add node and we're gonna add a Layer node. On the node underneath, we're gonna right click and we're gonna name it Skin. Then we're gonna click on the layer node and we're gonna hit option S two more times to bring up two more nodes. We're gonna right click on the next node and we're gonna name it background BG. And then on the last node, we're gonna name it final. I know this is a lot of nodes and it seems intimidating, especially if you're just starting out. I do recommend labeling things like I'm doing. It'll save you a lot of time and a lot of headache when you go to tweak things or change things or if you need to fix something. But trust me, it's not as intimidating as you think it is. Just take it step by step, follow this video, and I will explain more as we go. What we're gonna do is make sure we're on the first of these three dots right here where we've got lift, gamma, gain, offset. I'm gonna go down here to the contrast and I'm gonna go ahead and start cranking it up quite a bit because it's kind of the look I'm going for. We can always dial that back later. We're gonna grab the gain and we're gonna turn it down quite a bit. And we're also gonna grab the gamma and we're gonna kind of balance it by turning it back up. I do check scopes as I'm going, uh, but I'm really just going off of a look. White balance is a little bit of a different thing. I'm really dialing that in uh, because unless you have a calibrated monitor, you're not really 100% sure. Scopes are always gonna tell the truth and your eyes will lie to you. So do keep that in mind. Always be checking your scopes to get the best result. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna click on saturation. We're gonna bring this up a little bit, not too crazy, about 60 looks pretty good. The green in the background is looking a little too oversaturated, so I'm actually gonna jump into the hue versus saturation within the curves, that being the third tab, and I'm gonna bring the green down a little bit to kind of balance it out a little bit better. Add another one and bring that down, just so it's not over the top. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna click on the look node and before we move on, we're actually gonna click on the layer node. Next to it, we're gonna go to composite mode and we're gonna scroll down to soft light is what I like for this look right here. And then within the look node, we're actually gonna grab the saturation and we're gonna bring it down quite a bit. 
That way it's looking a little more dead, a little more grungy feel to it. Next, we're gonna click on our skin node and I'm gonna grab the eyedropper, which is next to the curves. I'm gonna highlight my skin right here. You can click the magic wand up in the left to just isolate the skin to make it easier to see. And you can click and hold that eyedropper over skin and add more to see if you've missed some or if you've gotten too much. You can mess with the hue, saturation, and luminance to really dial in the skin tones and just isolate them. I definitely recommend tweaking with that and playing around and finding what really looks good for you. I think that looks pretty good. I am going to bring the blur radius up and I'm going to bring the denoise up. It kind of helps smooth it out so if there's some fall off onto something else. Then I'm going to click on that magic wand up in the left again. I'm going to uncheck it and now we have everything just like it would normally be to get a really good idea to see if you've collected your skin tone correctly and isolated it. You can go down to saturation on the skin tone node. Ideally, that's not what I'm going for, but it lets us know if we've selected our skin tones correctly. So I'm going to hit command Z to get back to normal on that. I do want to bring the skin tones up, but that was a little overboard. 70-ish looks pretty good on this image. I'm gonna grab the offset and bring it a little bit more to the orange, yellow, red section just to kind of tweak my skin tones a little bit more. I'm also gonna grab the gamma and do the same thing, tweaking it just to fine tune what I think looks good for this image. We're gonna click on the number two tab in the bottom left within the color wheels, and we're gonna bring the color boost up a little bit. Uh, really five or 6% is all I'm looking like I need for this image on my skin tones. If you wanna see what it looks like with or without a node, you can click on the node you want. And on a Mac, I hit Command D, and you can turn it off and on and really see what it's doing with that node. Then what we're gonna do is click on our background node. And before we do anything with this, we actually need to grab the the blue square off of our skin and connect it to the blue triangle on the background node. And what that's doing is that's linking these two and it's gonna mimic everything that's going on in the skin node. It's gonna bring that to the background node. But what we wanna do is invert it. So next to the key input, we're gonna hit the invert button. Now, if we do anything, it's gonna affect everything but the skin tones. It's gonna to leave the skin tones alone because we inverted this node. Still within the background node, I am gonna go inside the curves. I am gonna uncheck all the colors together to isolate and have them separate. I'm gonna click on the red one and I'm actually gonna bring it down a little bit. I'm gonna curve that and kind of dial it in the way that I'm liking, cool it off just a little bit. I'm gonna go over to the color wheels and I'm gonna mess with the temperature to kind of counteract that, but still keep that cool tone. It's just coming on a bit strong. That's looking pretty good. We can also grab the offset wheel and kind of tweak that a little bit, also fine tuning it. Again, this is just finding what looks good to your eyes. I'm actually gonna click back on the skin and I am gonna grab the color boost on the second tab within the color wheels and I'm gonna bring that down a little bit. It's coming on just a little too strong. I'm also gonna jump back into the qualifier and I am gonna turn the blur radius up quite a bit more. That way there's a little bit better of a fall off on the skin. Now we're gonna jump back into the final node right here. And what we're gonna do is add a power window on top of me. I'm gonna expand this to cover majority of the image and I'm also gonna feather it a lot so it has a very good fade. And what I'm gonna do is bring the temperature really far down on that final node. I'm also gonna turn the contrast really, really high up. And I know what you're thinking, this is starting to look really bad, but don't worry, we're gonna fix that here in just a second. What I wanna do is I want to invert this mask, so I'm going to invert that right next to the power window that I selected. It's still not looking amazing, so we're gonna feather that and stretch it out even more. Jump back over to the color wheels and turn the temperature back up just a little bit. I might have went a little too far at the beginning. Adjust that a little bit more until it's just hugging the edges of the frame. I'm also gonna turn the gain down a little bit just so it's kinda got this contrasting look going on to it. If I hit Command D, we can see what it's doing with and without it. And it's just adding that little bit of extra it needed around the image. 
I'm also gonna click on the curves and I'm gonna dial the highlights up a little bit and drop the lows down a little bit more and crush them. Just tweaking this final look that I'm going for. If you guys don't have those tabs next to the lines on the color wheels and you're wanting to know how to curve a line like that, right next to the custom button within the curves right here, you got these three little dots. If you click on that, scroll down and go the edible spline and check that and it will bring that up. There's a couple different options you can also do so feel free to play with those and find out what works for you you guys can see right here here's a before and an after and it is a dramatic difference in look I would definitely experiment with things and you don't have to follow this exactly but it's showing you guys that you can link skin tones and backgrounds together and do a lot of things that's really gonna help you out in the long run well, there you go, guys. That's how I color grade my footage. Uh, this is just one of many steps in what I do. If you guys would like to see more tutorials on color grading, let me know in the comments below. If you'd like to see a tutorial on how to save and create your own LUTs, let me know. I would love to hear your thoughts on that. LUTs are an amazing thing and there is a time and a place to use them. So if you would like to learn how to do that, drop them comments below. If you guys do something like this, a look uh, inspired from what I created, tag me on Instagram and Twitter. I would love to check your work out. Give me a thumbs up if you guys like this video. Subscribe if you haven't already with a bell notification on so you don't miss any of my new videos. You guys are amazing. I'm the Iron Giant. I'll see you next time. Peace.